gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Aiden Meets Interesting People. Good of me, sticking a few together, um, using my school holidays to get a few out to you. And I found myself here in uh, someone's shed. Uh, looks like a bit of a, uh, a home brew setup. So I want to introduce you to Sam Munro. Hey, how you going? Founder? What are you, a founder or a co Yeah, co founder. Yeah. Co founder. Co founder, co director of um, Middle Island Brewing Co. Middle so, Island yeah, Brewing Company. Brewing. Wannable's yeah. own own brewing company. Yes, own brewing company, and um, <laughs> yeah, don't we? All um, home brewers at heart, and we're coming yeah. together, and let's uh, we press play. So, Sweet, right? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get to how this has all come about. I remember um, my very first episode of Aiden meets interesting people. I did a, an episode with Taylor Ralph, who's a, a motorbike racer, lives yep. here in Wannable, and. Uh, her garage where we did it was full of motorbikes. There was <laughs> heaps of them and it was and, and trophies and leathers and all this sort of stuff. And I, I yep. remember saying to her, is this your happy place? That was my opening question. And I feel like this could be your happy place. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is uh, Simon Adams Shed. He's a co, co-founder and co-director and um, we've done a few brews in here together. But yeah, something similar like this at home. Um, as well and yeah our sheds are our happy places absolutely <laughs> right so we're in simon adams his, simon adams. his yep. shed yep. um and he he's been brewing stuff for a long time so he, he's a, a, a co-owner of, yep. of uh of yeah, middle yeah. island brewing company he's is been, it just the two of you ah uh, there's there's um three families we've three got, families we've got the adams um the Howes, and the munros right so there's um yeah six six couple oh six six people three couples and um three families yeah we've um come together to create the dream so right couldn't have done it by ourselves so it's like yeah. his dad and your dad and we're yeah. all in, into it together or what um so um the Howes have been brewing beer for 20 years um off and on uh, throughout their time um the adams have been brewing um since the 40s um yes with um carolyn's um dad who started the um, the Australian um, Amateur Brewing Association? Back yeah, in so Carolyn and Carolyn and Simon, that's whose yeah. whose house we're in now. That's right. And, and Carolyn's dad. Carolyn's dad. Yeah, 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 we were just talking about him slightly off air. Yeah, uh, fill us in just just quickly. Um, You've got so some info there. It's good. His name's um, Gordon Clark, and yeah, he pioneered um, home brewing in Australia. Um, he's brewing since the um, the tax was actually brought in, but yeah, he um, he's pioneered a lot of home brewing and. Um, Bringing it to um, a wider order, wider audience. So, yeah. Um, yeah. No, hats off to. He was, a, he was a bit of a rebel, wasn't he? Yeah, trailblazer, absolutely. Because <laughs> what you what you were reading out, if you can find it again, read it out. Um, the, the dates where yeah, um, pro, pro, the prohibition of home brewing stopped so, in the seventies or something, um, didn't it? He's there's a he created a poem, but it it's, it goes back to saying he's been brewing beer since forty nine, but yes. um. Uh, in 30 years of brewing prior to when the uh, legislation got passed, yeah, in 73, he was um, then became president from 70, uh, 72 of the Australian Amateur Brewers and then straight in, yeah, until um, he relinquished, relinquished his role um, in in the uh, in the eighties, so yeah, we passed it on, right. passed the baton on. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. then Simon picked it up off off his dad, who, who yeah, and off, then yeah. Uh, yep, yeah. Um, so yeah, Simon's been brewing off and on for I think twenty years, and we've really stepped up our game. Um, Simon did it, especially uh, in the last five. Yeah, um, going from kit and kilos to f- all grain brewing, which is um, okay. The, I have um, no idea what that means. So kitten that, kilos. So kitten kilos is where you get an extract and you add some sugar. Kitten, as in a like kit. a baby cat. No, as a, oh, okay. As, as a kit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, when you talk quick like I do, um, yeah, it does. A kit and kilo. A kit okay. and kilo. Um, okay. And then yeah, all grain, which is um, yeah, what everyone would know what beer um, is in its true form. Yes. So um, yeah, he's been doing it for for quite a while now. Um, he's collected a lot of great gear as well. To yeah, we'll get um, to the gear because yeah. I'm impressed. And yeah. then, um, yeah, I've been doing it since 2019. Right. Okay. So this, this, probably the reason you're on the podcast is because I didn't know, but like we worked together, but I didn't yep. know you were a, uh, a, a, a home brewer or a, or a, yeah. a brewer. Yep. You've probably stepped out from the home brew label now. I feel yeah. like if you've got, if you've got your own label and four beers, <laughs> yeah. you can probably stop. I can stop calling you a home brewer. But, uh, you, you told me that, yeah, you bought a home brew kit. Yeah, two, in 2019 for yep, Christmas. For Christmas. So, right before we knew what was going to happen with COVID. Yep. Absolutely. And within that time, including the fact that we've had COVID, you've uh, <laughs> you've um, built up this yeah. company. 
yep. that already has four beers or whatever. That's such a rapid rise. Um, yeah, it's it's unreal actually. Because <laughs> think about yeah, starting brewing at Christmas time in 2019, our first four beers that we made with uh, my wife Camille, they sucked. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but got a lot of people happy, and um, with with slowly but surely got better and better and better at it. And then we pressed play during that first lockdown on actually buying a um, an all grain um, machine, so similar to what Simon has here, and got turning from you know, going grain to glass. So right. um, trying to brew beer in its purest form, and um, had a few friends that go, you should you should open a brewery. You know, this is okay. Really so the first four were yeah. garbage. Yeah, first the four. Fifth one, when you sort of upgraded a yeah, little bit. They go, that's actually a lot better. And yeah, um, palatable. You, yeah, <laughs> they gave you a pat on the back. And then I think I, th- I think the first three recipes that I created off um, other beers that and other styles that we really liked, people go, actually, that's really nice. Yeah. Can you, can you make me some? So during lockdown, you know, we're making beer and leaving it on front doorsteps. So, you know... Doing, oh, doing right. right You're a good lockdown friend to have. Yeah, yeah. that was good fun. And um, <laughs> no, that was really good. So um, it gave gave us something to do during lockdowns, but also um, ability to kind of switch off from what is happening on the outside world to just going back to doing something very, very simple, like um, cooking and making, um, yeah. making delicious things that we can consume. And you were able to get all those ingredients sort of sent to the house and yeah, stuff anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. Because oh, was still delivering. Yeah. Very, very lucky that the deliveries were still rolling and got really good relationships with um, home brew stores as well. So they, um, yeah, they now, now know who we are as um, as Middle Island, but they um, they could certainly remember us as customers through the um, through the lockdowns. And yeah, it's great to have those relationships. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. All right. So the what. Talk to me about the brewing process then. So you get your kit in 2019. Yep. You need some water. You yep. need some yeast, hops, and yeast, yep. and time, and time. And right. Time. Not, yeah. the, not the herb, but the actual. No, yeah. No. Well, you can add time if you really can want. You? you can. Oh, yeah, you can add. We'll make a recipe. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, how, what's the what's the process? So for for us now with grain, we we kind of look at uh, um, we get a percentage of a base a base malt. So um, for instance. For our Southern Ocean Ale that we've got out, we've got Pilsner um, as our base, and then we throw some specialty through that with some wheat and some oats and other little bits and pieces. Um, and yeah, you, you're kind of grabbing all the sugars and the starches and all the proteins from the from that when you add water at a certain temperature, and then you play around with hops, timings as well when you add the hops to the boiling um, wort they call it. Yeah. And then add it to fermentation, add a special yeast that creates a different flavour profile. Set it to what Simon's got here to a certain temperature. He's bringing his down, so it's finished fermentation. So he's there's a batch out. in there. So there's yeah. a batch in there, right? Yeah. Is that is that any of the one? That's not any of the four beers you've got now, though, is um, it? Or is this? An, is, yeah, this is probably a. Um, this is one that we're potentially gonna. Oh, it could be. A, could be the yeah. fifth beetle. Yeah, it could be. It right. Could be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> okay. Oh, like, a little. little um, a, we'll, a little tester in yeah, there. Yeah, we'll always be home brewers first and, you know, big brewers yeah. second. So I think um, until the big brewers, we're, we're doing that um, more often, then, yeah, we'll have to come home brewers second. But um, <laughs> at the moment, yeah, all our trial batches have been like this and then we invite people around to try it and see what they think. And Sweet, yeah. 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 All right, so you, so you mucked around with the, the recipes of... So there's recipes out there for beers that already exist. Yep. And so you grab those and you go, oh, wouldn't it be good if it had a little bit more of this? Absolutely. Wouldn't it be better if it had a little bit less of that? Or what What would happen if we put it in for a bit longer? Yeah. And then and then people taste it and go, actually, that's really good. Yeah. So it's it, it, they are your own recipes, aren't they? Yeah. 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 Right. So you, you can't really patent a recipe but or a style, but you can yeah. definitely someone who's trailblazing in that area of, of um, brewing. So... You look at Bolter with their XPAs and um, their lighter style beers. Like they've set set trends. Same with Coopers with their pale ales. Yeah. Um. Like, and um. Oh, who was is it? Yeah, Pacific Ale from up at Stone and Wood. Do those companies, they, because they want to remain, um, I, I guess, they don't want people to come in and copy their things. Do they have yeah. access to hops that you just can't get? Um, they do they def- just have a monopoly on them? They definitely have contracts and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, which is, yeah, when you've got the money to do that. And they actually grow their own hops as well. So they can, um, so if you can purchase land, you can obviously yeah. grow your own. 
Um, but it is a lot of time and effort. Um, but yeah, with home brewing, we're able to access a lot of hops and, and on the scale that we use it, um, it's pretty available. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, because those hop companies, they still want to make some money on the yeah. on the side without the big boys. But yeah, <laughs> like they feed the um, the home brew craze, and then you know there's a lot of breweries that have started because of home brewing. So probably most of them would yeah. start because of it. So so which yeah. which one go through? What, what is this beer by the way? Because um, I want to drink it, but I feel like we should talk about it first. Um, you've got a, a pale ale there from Ooh. from Simon. That's um, oh, this is just a, a, a yeah a different mix. I'll a different it. mix. Yeah. I like pale ales by the way. So you've, yeah. you've chosen well. Um, so it's Simon just playing around with um, timing, um, different malts added together with a different hop variety that we've probably used or yeah. everything. And it's just coming up with a concept and seeing what works and what doesn't. And you know, that's potentially what we'll do as home brewers forever. And that's what big breweries do. They pilot test, they put a little keg on and see if people buy it. If yeah. it works and they get good feedback, they go, right here, let's play. Yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go yeah. big. I've got the Guardian in front of me and that came about during lockdown with just wanting a, a, a sessionable beer that's not high in ABV, but big, big flavours. That's the mid-strength that's one, the isn't mid-strength. it? mid-strength, yeah. yeah. So, um, and the best feedback we've had is it doesn't taste like a mid-strength. So, um, that's... Yeah, well, funnily enough, we were having a few beers on yeah. uh, Sunday night and I reckon I was through about three of them before you even pointed it out that, you know, that's yeah. a bit strict. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know, yeah. Yeah, so no, it's, uh, you wake up a little bit better, but... Uh, yeah. yeah, I know, I finished it off with about 19cc <laughs> into I can, so... <laughs> yes, no, you, you enjoy a treat afterwards, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But no, um, like, we're, we're proud as punch of what we've been able to create and yeah. our, um, our one of our uh, um, experimental beers that we've done with um, the Get Shucked Oyster Stout... That's got fire, um, that's got real oysters unshucked in right. the beer. Right. Okay. Now I had that question written down and then I deleted it because I thought it sounded ridiculous. But mm. I was sort of scrolling through your Facebook page, and most people that I interview have extensive Facebook pages. But your company is so young; mm. uh, it really helped me because it was only a year old. So yeah, that was great. But it's sitting there, yeah, like oysters straight from the pier and into the kettle or something. Yep. And I'm like, yep. surely not, yep. really. But it is. Um, we got up at five o'clock, drove to Port Arlington, got oysters, drove back to Prickly Moses where we brewed it <laughs> and straight in. It was, um, yeah, unreal. And some of the faces of um, the staff that were working on the day, um, they were... Putting yeah, like live seafood into yeah, the kettles. they were a bit perplexed, but um, it was it was all good fun. And um, Are there any other beers that do that? Um, any other yeah, companies? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, there's lots of different things people are putting into their beers. Um, mussels and all sorts. Like if you want okay. that... Um, that you know, a bit of a salty kind of finish, which is what we we're after with the get shucked, um, and it does cl- the the shells of the um, um, of the oysters actually do help clean the beer up a little bit as well, instead of adding other um, like thinning agents. So it kind yeah. of yeah, cleans the beer as it goes, but okay. you, you also get the salty um, brine from the um, from the oyster when it pops open at about eighty degrees. So. <laughs> It was um, pretty amazing. It sounds like an experiment that could just go horribly wrong. Like Absolutely. You pour it out and go, like, do you want to test it? No, yeah. like, you test it first. I don't yeah. want to test that. Absolutely. So um, so the Howes have brewed this beer and um, have won awards with it at a homebrew level. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So knowing that it actually was successful um, and when we, when we came together, we were all like, yep, they've got a beer that is going to do well for us as a stout. In, right. In so this court. one was made before sort of Middle Island yeah, company yep, was existed, yep, yep. and they've had we've got one in the shed here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Absolutely. So oh, cool. We, yeah, we um we've all kind of brought a little recipe that we um we all love. Yeah. And so with the three of us, we combined and we made the the Southern Ocean Ale um, together, and then we've all kind of played around with our own little homebrew recipes that we've brought, and then yeah, Simon with his Howling Heffy, myself with the Guardian, and then yeah, the house with the um the Get Shark. So. It's um. Oh, I see how that's worked. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool. So yeah, yeah, like the beer that you're drinking at the moment, um, with the pale, like that's one of the ideas that we've got next that we want to bring out. But we want to do like our own Middle Island Brewing Co. homebrew competition. We run with a concept, and we all make the same sort of beer, and um, then we invite people in. There's a you know, blind tasting. Ah. So yeah. Right. Yeah, the people's beer. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the so, people's choice. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's those type of things that, because we're our home brewers first, we yeah, try to um, stay true to that kind of um, feel and 
Yeah. That people kind of decide what beer kind of that they they like and they taste from us, and yeah, release that. So perfect idea. Yeah, yeah that's a good way to do it. So the um, so you basically build and trial beers using this smaller sort of setup. Yep. And you've got one similar at your house. Yep. Yep. Okay, but not as neat and tidy, so we came here instead. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, so we'll talk about what, what we're actually looking at in a minute because look, they look, yeah, they look really cool. Yeah. Um, but effort. you, so you trial it, and then you, I mean, you guys obviously can't can the amount of beers that you're selling now. So no. how how what's the canning and and transport process and all that that yeah. you guys have to go through now. Um, so we've been very very lucky that um, of the two breweries that we've brewed out of, um, one which is East Co- uh, East Bendigo Brewery, they've got their own canning line, so okay. it that doesn't travel very far between where it gets produced to where it gets fermented, where then it gets um, canned up. So it's only got to travel ten meters between right. each thing, and then whereas Prickly Moses, they we um, we've employed a mobile canning line to come in they back into it from a from a van oh really unload yeah. and they can it there and then pack up and they go home so that's the way we've released our beers so far yeah so sometimes you get it canned yeah here the, and sometimes there yeah and that's all what just pretty much yeah contract based and, and yeah. finance based like sometimes absolutely yeah and yeah. with um when we press play on a brew yeah it, um yeah we can't bring it back here to can so no. we um we um we do it through other companies and yeah until we can be big enough and we can pour it ourselves at our own venue then um yeah that'll be the dream yeah but, um oh so the, now, the goal is to actually brew it and can it in your own place yeah absolutely that, yeah yeah so something like this but you know but yeah. hundred times bigger <laughs> and a little bit yeah shiny so, hundred more sheds yeah 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 so no it's that is the dream but um for now we're we're absolutely wrapped oh. that we can do what we do day to day and be able to play on the weekends with um, yeah with a, with a passion so. what sort of what sort of volume are you doing at the moment are you are you brewing these in equal volumes or um, is one more popular than others or? yeah we've we've probably um hit a sweet spot with a couple of styles like we've got the mid-strength ale that's um, been really popular the heffy the howling heffy um is a german hefeweizen wheat beer and it's oh. um the australian public are probably yet to tap into that market i think yeah, but, I used to drink wheat beers a lot, a bit overseas. Yeah, yeah not so much here. Yes, so yeah. uh, it's a gorgeous beer, but I think um, people not knowing Hefeweizen as as such, they are, they might not go to that style just yet. But I think um, you put that on a paddle, and everyone's going to go, "Oh, yeah, that's actually really nice. That's I'll, go, one, yeah. I'll go have one of those." Yeah. Um, and right. Start, so you yeah. sell, you you're making less of that one at the moment. Yeah. Until at the the, moment, yeah. yeah. So we're probably about to press play again on our Southern Ocean and the Guardian um, yeah. in the next um, two two or so months, ready for summer. Um, and with the stout being a cooler month kind of um, style of beer, um, we did a thousand liters in April. So that'll hopefully carry us through to, excuse me, the end of winter and possibly into summer, depending on um, um, how much beer gets sold yeah, through these school it. holidays and. Um, and venues that are yeah, starting to pop up, so which um, that are taking us on. So yeah, more su- more suppliers. Yeah. Right. So what's the if, if you want um, if you want a bunch of beers, you say I want uh, you know two thousand liters of Southern Ale yep. ready yep. for summertime. Yep. When do you have to start organising all of that? What's the um, so we're in June right now, about to turn into July, right. and I'm looking at um, potentially brewing in the next three four weeks and right. even into eight weeks so that's that window but because we're contracting gypsy brewing out we're at the mercy of the breweries that are actually doing their own beers and other right. and so we've got to try and fit into their schedule you got to fit yeah so gypsy brewing is yeah. the one in is that the prickly moses one no so, yeah we're gypsy brewing out of there so yeah um that, oh you're gypsy brewing yeah. that's the term that's the term used yeah. for yeah. their brewery your beer yeah and they make okay okay yeah yeah, right. so, sorry, I thought it was the name of a company. No, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's my fault. No, no. Um, yeah, so we're we're just um, just waiting for the nod and a bit of time, and then from there we kind of get all the the cogs in motion, and um, we look at how to we look at talking to labelling kegs companies so we can press play on getting them sorted before um, the the canning day. Or the day that the um, fermentation's finished, so it can get um, transferred into kegs for consumption. So yeah, um, we kind of work. You got to work backwards. 
um, of when the end day would be would come up. Yes. And that, so that gives you the lead time. Yeah. And, um, for the finished product, but um, but also the setup, where how long is it going to take for all your ingredients to get to the brewery, as well. So right, it's got to be yeah. So you order the ingredients in, yeah, and yep. say this is like we're delivering the yep, I don't know, yep, four hundred kilos of hops or whatever. Yep. it'll be here on the seventeenth. Yep, and you guys will be able to get started on the eighteenth because it's all here. Yeah, but you've got to organise that. They don't do that. Um, depending on who who um, we're contracting with, they yeah. um they say all right, we can source it through our own um, yep. our own connections. Yep. Um, you know, but it, it, again, it's it's just a cost that gets put onto the end, or we we can kind of control that cost a little bit by sourcing different things. And if we like a certain type of grain that they don't normally use. Yeah, they we, don't have, yeah. Yeah, we kind of will um, go, all right, this is what we're going to do. This is how you, how you brew it. Let's go um, down this this direction. Yeah. And we go and source all those ingredients. But at the moment, we're very happy with um, what the breweries have been able to do. Yeah. And they've kind of sourced a lot of stuff themselves for us. And um, we're probably getting more comfortable with actually sourcing all yeah, of those stuff ourselves. Trusting them, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, trusting that so, they're going to do it properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on the, on the I guess, trusting them too, it's, do, are you up there periodically while this brew is going to check on it? Or do you just go, right, If as long as you put in X number of kilos of this and 80 litres of that, yep. I know what's going to come out of the other end? Or do you go like, yeah. oh, I better check on this because I don't um, trust them. <laughs> No, I absolutely trust them. Absolutely. Well, good, good thing to say in case yeah. they watch this. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. No, guys, if you're watching, thank you. Yes. Um, um, but no, um, because we absolutely love it, mm. um, it's something that we love to do at home. Um, to do it on a, such a big scale is just an absolute novelty I see you're quite happy to go up yeah, there. Yeah. And, um, so we're up there chatting away and learning how they do it and, this and, and yeah, learning how to go from... 21 litres to 2,000 litres. Yeah. Um, it's not a great big, um, in, ter- in terms of jump, it's not a big, big jump, but yeah. it's just more moving parts. Um, so learning how to use the system um, um, and each brewery is different. So it's, yeah, it's great to learn as much as we can before we press play on um, going to the next step, which is doing it ourselves in our own shop. But at the moment, it's, yeah, we love going up there and helping out you know, we're the ones in there scraping out all the grain from the from the mash tons because. Oh, really? You yeah. put the apron on and get in. Yeah, we get in there. We get involved. And yeah. We, you know, we we put hops and we we put the oysters in and with the get sharked and we did everything. But when it comes to the um, the other end, um, with packaging, we love being there and helping out with whatever we can do. But uh, there are certain things that we can't do yet because we don't know how to do that. Yes. But we go there to learn, and then they show us how to do it, and I think. The, um, the best thing about the brewing and the beer industry is that everyone is just so passionate about it and they love it and yeah. they love sharing what they what they know and so oh, cool. I, th- I think um, that's one reason why we're, we're we're doing what we're doing is because people have been so open with us and so kind that we were able to come in and and join in on along the way so if yeah it keeps the enthusiasm up absolutely yeah, very good. How's your how's your guardian going? You got you got somewhere to be after this, so you're on the you're on the oh, mid strength. I'm on the mid strength. Yeah, I'm going to go visit um, a brewery over in Mount Gambia and and um, chat to them. Yeah, um, yeah, Kylie, out at um at Wool Store Brewery. Wool Store? Yeah. yeah, it's um. Are you going to try and get your beers into there, or no, you no, brew just, out of there? Just oh, uh, maybe. Just, just but, yeah, okay. but just um just go meet visit, and greet meet and greet and go chat to them they're doing a brew today so um just go and watch and say good day and that's probably the best thing about it is people come and go during breweries even when they're not open just to check it out and say hi and build yeah. those friendships up so yeah it's um it's awesome <laughs> good idea so what's in the in the pipeline for Middle Island Brewing Company I don't know how much you're allowed to say there's um, a couple of experimental things in the in the in kettles the, here but yeah, um yeah if you, what's like what? What would be next? So, non-alcoholic beers are really popular. Yeah, Any, absolutely. Um, well, the mid looked at that or not really. I, th- I think to go down that road, we need you need a bit more infrastructure as well oh, okay. to do it properly. Yeah, um, yeah. But we've had a dabble at it, and it, we're pretty happy with the result. But yeah, um, it's what, prob- what's the, so the actual alcohol comes? Is, so the alcohol in beer comes from the yeast and the sugars that you put in. Yeah, right. So if you make it non-alcoholic. Yep. 
Uh, it's you, not just just don't put yeast out because obviously it doesn't work. So, no, so you got to you kind of do it as a as a second. There's a second um, process that happens after you you ferment out first. Oh, so then okay. you, you um you, I'm not all over what happens next, but um yeah, th- there's a few extra little bits and pieces that you've got to do. Right. So a non-alcoholic beer would start off alcoholic. Yep. And then you burn the alcohol off somehow. Or yeah. Whatever that's works. right. So it's not okay. like dilution through water. It's not dilution, <laughs> but. Um, but yeah, it, there's, just, there's yeah. numerous moving parts that you've like got to be able to... Like a beer cordial or something. Yeah. <laughs> you just make the flavour, add some water and send it off. Absolutely. I wouldn't that... have thought so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Uh, okay, so, but, but no no grand plans through that. So what, what would be uh, the grand plans? If uh, I was to look back at Middle Island Brewing Company in a year's time, what would I see? I think what you'd see is um, our beer um, well received in, the, in our local area and um, probably the demand f- to go yeah. bigger. Yeah. Um, we're, we're over this summer, we feel like we could probably, um, that chance for growth is definitely there. And I think um, in some of the venues that we're in, we're very, very lucky that there is um, a lot of, say, people, at, well, it should see a lot of people. People should see us a lot more yeah. and the potential for more um, sales for us. But at the moment, that sale is um, all about building relationship with customers as well. So building a, a brand that is reputable but trusted and also, you know, fun and inviting for everyone. So yeah. We want to be a part of the um the the reason why people come to Warnable to uh um, yeah, okay. to holiday. So visit us as well, just offer something just that little bit different as well. Yeah. All right. Bit more <laughs> More beers in the line, or um, I absolutely, but to yeah. Uh, yeah, to if we were to open a brewery tomorrow, we would have eight beers on tap. Oh, with, okay, with, without yeah. without even question. But to market, um, we, you need space. Yes, and you'd be competing against yourself if you're in cafes, um, trying to get sell eight different beers. Yes, four's a really good number, especially come winter time. Summer, we'll probably be pushing around that three as well. Um, potential for a third um, new release, yeah. bit of fun and a bit of buzz. A couple oh, of summer yeah. time, and right. yeah, try and run a few events through different um, different venues, um, especially mm. when the warmer weather is on. It's um, yeah, it's but the main aim at the moment yeah. is just to build what you've already yeah yeah. 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 So just, you, yeah. you've hit it hard for the last year, yep. and then build what you've got, and then worry about the yeah the sort of growth a bit. So how what's the the reach of Middle Island Brewing Company at the um, moment. So right now we're... Be- forest. Be- beers in Forest? Beers in Forest. That's pretty far. Yeah. We've got beer over in Portland, yeah. all the way to Lawn and um, up to Ararat and Caston and back down. So utilising people that we know and um, also people giving us a go as well. So we're yeah. absolutely wrapped with, um, especially the people that are a little bit further away from us. Um for instance, like Caston and now are at that through, you know, connections through family, similar to over with um, our relationships we've got with Camperdown as well. Like there's um, family connections through there. And people have just been so enthusiastic towards us and getting us on in their stores. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're even up in Darlington as well, up at the Elephant The Bridge. Elephant, yeah. Yeah, and like, that place is just oozing with charm. That's really nice, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. And to see our beer up there as well, it's just... Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's a bit... They give me a reason oh. to stop on my way to Melbourne. Oh. <laughs> We've always said that that place is just the most picturesque pub in Australia. Yeah, I went there straight after... I can't remember the girl's name, that the, the, the lady's name that um, renovated it. I know it's just been recently resold. So, yeah. I want to say Karen, but I don't know. I don't know for sure. But we did a couple of comedy nights up there. And yep. She just wanted like free comedy for the locals, <laughs> like the farmers, to get them back into the pub and yeah. give them a laugh because she said, you know, times had been tough and whatever Very tough, else. Yeah. But uh, yeah, cool little joy. We did one inside in the bar there and one yep. out in the beer garden as well. Yeah, yeah, it's no, really cool. No, the guys up there, they're just amazing, and um, what they've been able to do recently as well, they've continued that trend, trying to get the locals back, and I think. Yeah, no lockdowns does help. Yes. And, um, yeah, it's just a community feel. And I think that really epitomises what we're trying to do is we're trying to create that community feel with um, with our beers. And our logo especially yeah. is, is um, designed to resonate with us as locals, but also we um, if people have got kids and have seen Oddball. It's yeah. Like, yeah, it's like, For sure. okay. Oddball and the Penguins. And, and who, the penguins. Did, who designed the cans and the logo? Um, so the logo was done by Tommy McKenzie. Okay. Um, yeah, he's a train fella. Um, 
used to play cricket with him. Yeah. Um, he's a fantastic lad. Golden boy, look him up. Um, golden boy. Yeah, golden boy. That's his, what? That's, that's like his, an Instagram handle? Instagram handle. Okay. Um, teacher down at Cobden. And yeah. Then moved to Melbourne. Um, he's now an artist. So we've probably done a really good job of getting him while he's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> we started a job. Nah, you, you, yeah, you started yeah. it. Yeah, he's only, he's and, only famous now because he's... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> um, and we had a concept with... Um, with the waves and we took it down to Star Printy. So Sammy Henderson down there, he, um, he ran with our idea and he's created what he's done and we, um, we can't fold it. it just... right. oh, so the logo was done by one person and then yep. the wave design at the back, yeah. which is the same wave, just different, different, different colours throughout. Yep. Yep. And that's what we wanted. Oh, Star Printing did that one. Yeah, so yeah. that's um, yeah, Terang and, and Warnable. So kept as, everything as, we, as close as we could to um, utilising the, um, the talent that we've got around town. Yeah, I think immediately when you look at it, you'd, it's warnable straight away. Like yeah. The dogs and the penguins don't exist anywhere else in the world yet. So That's it. Makes it easy, yeah. Yeah, and I think um, it's, it's yeah, a bit of nostalgia, but also it's, um, it's very kind and, and appealing. So, yeah, it's, um, oh, we've done well so far. We're flying. We're flying. <laughs> Um, all right, next uh, ne- next question from my barrage of questioning. Yes. I feel like this is like an interrogation sometimes. I love it. You love it, yeah. I love I, it. I, it's, the best thing about this podcast is I, I message people about doing it and sometimes they're like, oh, I don't know, because of the cameras and the microphones yeah. and stuff. But like, you get someone who's really passionate about whatever it is mm. and that all disappears really quickly and they just talk about whatever it is. Yeah. And that's they're... You can just see how passionate they are about it. And I honestly see how passionate you are about home brewing. And yeah. not, only the, not only the brewing of it, but the, I think the business side of it too. I think yeah. it's, um, like, I'm assuming that you didn't, like you did, you, you went from school, you went to school teaching, yep. went to uni for that, blah, blah, blah. So brewing the beers, that's the passion, et cetera, that's, et cetera. Yeah. The business side of things must have been completely foreign to you and you've had to yeah. learn so much about Absolutely. the business of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, being able to um, approach people um, to, and trying to sell stuff to them, no idea. Yeah. Um, we've now got 35 retailers. Yeah. And that's all through um, us scoping people out, talking to people, building relationships and... Um, people who know us as well, and then people jumping on because of what we do. So we're we're pinching ourselves at times because none of us are, are trained or yeah, know anything about business, business or marketing or no. advertising or anything. Yeah. That's right, and we're learning on the fly all the time, and that won't stop. Um, yeah. Because yeah, we we're not trained in that area and we don't know what's next <laughs> have you got but, people that advise you on this sort of stuff like yeah we do you, you obviously the face of it and and yep. simon and uh yeah and the house and yeah. the house but have you got people again behind the scenes who are like you know if you want to distribute these things mm. further and market better this is what you need to do um yeah we've probably on that cusp of what's on that next bit in terms of marketing so we're constantly talking to people about how how we can make it bigger um, because bigger is more growth and growth yes. is what we want. Yeah. Um, we've got uh, Insightful Media that we came I think, equal second in a competition as we first started. And yeah. it was her, um, her name's Tegan up at Shepherd and, and she um, got onto us and said, hey, I'm just starting out as well. So um, let, I'll, um, I'll, I'll do the same thing for you guys, but obviously you, you might, you get the third prize or, but you don't get the first prize type of thing. And oh, and she, that, was, that was marketing Marketing, time, like marketing and social media and all that. And that yeah. happened um, about this time last year, in okay. June, July. So you won an award and then the part yeah. of the, the prize for that was yeah. working with... Working with that person. In, insightful media. Yeah, in, insightful media. Ah, cool. and then, That's really good. Um, and then she's been on board with us since. So what you see on social media is um, we work with her and we design things together and then she... Then does she jazzes everything up? Yeah, it's very high quality. The yeah. stuff on your social media. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. we um, yeah, uh, absolutely stunning. My social media for Dirty Angel Comedy is literally me and taking photos on my phone. <laughs> like it's so shit. Yeah, and it only gets better when you um get a better phone, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's what I need. Yeah, I've got an iPhone eight. So yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. my marketing going. Yeah, that and then just you know a couple of little um, yeah, what do they call it? Um, edits and stuff with uh, yes on the settings but no I try it's, it, it's great yeah but it, like, I think 
that in its purest form is what you what people want. So yeah. they want to see um, they want to see people who make it. They want to get to know the story behind it. And I think with our social media, we, we're, that's what we're trying to create is a bit of um, that link between um, who we are and what we, what we offer and yeah. where we are as well. So highlighting our. Um, our amazing town. So. All the photos you can go like, I know where that is. I know where that is. Yeah, yeah I know where that is. Yeah, yeah. So hoping to do some more photos while um while we're on a break. Right. So um yeah, but do you want me to shave my chest and put a speedo on or something? Or? Absolutely. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sell a million. <laughs> Absolutely. And we'll do bombs off the back of the break wall. Ah, oh, perfect. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Right. But, yeah. Um. Let's let, let's have a look at what's behind us because people yep. watching are probably intrigued. Yep. Because normally, you know, you go into barbecues galore or something and get a homebrew kit. It's this little yep. plastic drum with a lid on the top, and uh, that was your first one. That's what we did. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. Of course, yeah, and that's what you would do if you were starting. Yep. Um, but this is not that, is it? No, <laughs> no. So this is um, several years of saving up and um, and growing. Yeah. Um, so with Simon especially because. Uh, you know, this is getting towards the um, the higher end of what you can do at home without breaking the bank. Okay. Um, so we've got two um, grandfather um, 35 litre uh, fermenters just here behind us. And right. um, the beauty of these things is you can manage a lot of this stuff from your phone. Really? Um, yeah, so it's all wireless and, and yeah. with down below, you can't see it on the screen, but we've got a glycol chiller that controls what that's this but it looks like a bar fridge yeah it does yeah um sounds like one too but yes. um it's it sets the temperature of what it is and it, um so cold liquid will run through that's like double walled okay and so it'll run liquid past it to keep it at a certain temp that it needs to be right and um so uh, liquid as in water yeah okay so no, it's got yeah. glycol um um liquid in it at the moment oh it's like so, a like a yeah. It's, it's a bit of a, like a like syrup gel? Yeah, gel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. it just constantly cycles yeah. through to keep it cold. What's yeah. actually in in the grain father? Oh, at the moment. As in like what, what ingredients? Like what, what oh. do you put in there? Um, so that one there is almost finished. I think he, Simon's done another pale ale. Okay. So yeah, just um, working on different concepts with what one you're drinking at the moment. So mm. just changing the times. Um, yeah. And this one's finished. So he's... Um, probably be brewing on the weekend and um, create a new one to try and, and right. then just behind you we've got um, two, three, three taps um, so six <laughs> six beers we can have on at one time at the moment we've Looking got um, the Hefeweizen in, in, oh, in, in, on tap in, in, on tap in there. on tap but it's um, it's not quite ready so it's carbonating in keg at the moment so with right. um, with probably the next step on these ones you can actually carbonate inside keg ah. and then uh, inside the fermenter, sorry, and then you yes. can go straight into a keg and actually drink straight away. So oh. reducing your time a little bit. Yeah. Um, so. Right. So how long ago would he have put got this started? Um, <coughs> two like, weekends, I reckon. Two um, weeks. Oh, so two weeks ago. Yeah. So two weeks. Yeah. Probably um, Saturday. So put last all the week, ingredients so in. Throw yep. the hops in. Throw the yeast yep. in. So throw it, the yep. In his um in the cooker. And then transfer oh, yeah. it into the um, fermenter over here. So, oh, so the cooker that oh, people can't see basically looks yeah. the same as that. But yep. It's, uh, yep. But it's yeah. got all your elements. It looks like a it. shop vac, like on. It like does. A, yeah. It like does. a vacuum cleaner in your in your work. Yeah. yeah. All right, and then so tip it all into there. Yep. And then it goes in there for two weeks. Yep. And then. Yep. And then. How do you get out of there? Tip it out. So. Or does it got a? Um, there's, so oh, there's racking down the bottom. Tapping. Um, yeah. Rack, they call them racking arms. So you um you plug in a hose and then you put that into your keg and then you try oh. and transfer it without any oxygen because oxygen kills beer. Oh, so, you got to try and get in there with yeah, yeah yeah yeah. So you you um you pressurize a keg and then because um, CO2 gas is heavier than oxygen, it will sit. Yeah. So then as the beer comes in, the uh, the CO2 kind of pushes the oxygen out. Okay. And then what you get at the end of it is just CO2. Then you put more CO2 on, then that carbonates your beer as well. So, ah. yeah. So you can go from, you can go from raw ingredients yep. to a beer that your mates can drink in... Oh, 21 days. 21 days. Yep. Um, yeah. And, you know, that's for what we kind of look at. Yeah. People are able to do it within a week. Oh. Yeah. Because they don't care about the taste or because they, well, <laughs> cause uh, they've got better machinery or well, what? If, um, it's brewing under pressure so mm. with um when you you add your yeast um it chews it starts to chew all the sugars and it creates carbon so you can't start to create co2 so instead of it being bled out 
through um, through an airlock, you can yeah. kind of use it to help create um, pressure and it carbonates ah. it as it goes, but it also speeds your um, speeds your okay. carb- uh, your, your cooking your time. fermentation yeah. up as well. Like so. your like your pressure cooker at home. Absolutely, yeah, it's similar, very very like similar. Your, yep. Chuck in your le- well, which I've never used by the way. So that's it. Probably hardly surprising. <laughs> you understand the concept, so that's all right. <laughs> a good analogy, that one. Ah, uh, very good. All right, so um, I asked you. I asked you before about. So you you are going to um. Let's say you go with your idea, and four of you make a beer. Yep. And, and under the constraints of okay, we're going to make a um, I don't know what would what would be another a. Uh, yeah, we'll probably we'll probably be looking at a pale ale. A pale ale. Actually. Okay. Yep. So let's say you, you all make a pale ale. Yep. We everyone does blind testing and goes right. I like yours. Yep. How do you? Can you patent that recipe and say, the patent is okay for to, in order to make fifty liters of it, you've got to have a kilo of this hops or something yeah. of this yeast and then this much water and that's my recipe and I'm going to paint that and if anyone else brews exactly the same beer that I'm having them in court. Yeah, I'm probably a little bit unsure actually of yeah. if you can patent the actual recipe but I think people with, um, with home brewing you kind of get a style and a clone of that beer and people yes. just go, oh yeah, I'll just make a clone of that. I'll try, I, I understand it. it has... These base ingredients. Yeah. Well, because Coopers then, literally sell their own stuff. They, that's right. You can yeah. buy Coopers branded yep. stuff and, and make your own yeah. pale ale at home. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, that's... Yeah. So they've, they've yeah. obviously allowed that. But if you wanted yeah. to patent one, you, you're not sure if you can do I'm it or not? I'm not too sure. Yeah. Um, because we started making clones of all the big beers that we really like to drink. Yeah. Um, that's how we started. That's how, that's how we started. But then we yeah. go, all right, I'm going to swap this out, that out, and I'm going to add and bring this in. Then yeah. that's my beer. Or yeah. I've even changed the quantities of what they've used, mm. and I then again I've just changed it. So like you can have thousands, no, sure, yeah. you can have thousands of recipes based off the one idea, just yes. by changing minute little things. So um, like time, for instance, when you add things, like say adding hops through the boil, you can you've just created a different thing because it could either be more bitter or more aromatic or even um, yeah or less bitter. So um, yeah, there's lots of possibilities, and I think, yeah. and that's how we got to our Southern Ocean is we brewed it three or four different ways, yeah. And then people said, no, this is the one. That's the yeah. one. So did it start off as like a, a known beer, and then you just changed so many of the things that yeah. it, it's now completely yeah. different. Yeah, um, yeah. The like down that XPA light Australian pale ale kind of style, because um, yeah, we're looking at what beer we'd love to drink, and. Yeah. Um, you know, there's three that really come to mind, which is the um, the um, Pacific Ale from both uh, Fat Yak and also um, Stone and Wood, and the yes. South Coast Ale from Pirate Life. We're like, oh, these are great. Oh, and okay. Yeah, under- yeah. Understanding what the colours are, we can kind of of what the beer is. We kind of uh, okay. They use these grains. And oh, literally go, by holding it up to the light and looking yeah, at it? Yeah. Oh, really? You yeah. can tell from that. Yeah, because yeah, um, the different colours um, from the grains will, yeah, like, for instance, the one that you've got there, that's a Pilsner base because it's more like a straw where mine's more golden. So that's yes. a pale. Okay. Like the base malt. So Yeah. So pale yeah. is the opposite of pale. Because um, I would say, as a colour, <laughs> yeah. this is more pale than that. Yeah. But obviously as a beer. Yeah. It's the opposite. Yeah, but... Um, and that's the thing, like people, are, <laughs> but you can use pale malt in pale ales. Yes. And that's probably more what Coopers do because it is a darker kind of colour in beer. Yeah. But that's the light Australian like style that we're kind of, we've lent towards. Um, so like that really strawy hue kind of colour. And yeah, we've just, okay, we'll, we like this. Let's do that. And then let's use these hops because we like them and they're available to us. Let's yeah. go. And then, yeah third go we like oh that's pretty good hops smells like marijuana doesn't it they're, they're really they're closely related that's <laughs> yeah because i did a, a brew what was it called St- steinman's, steinman's brew yeah, steinman's and i said to them i'm like i think i might, might have bitten a bit or what it just uh, don't do that yeah yeah awful yeah. yeah and then i'm like this smells like marijuana which i'm not i probably haven't seen literally <laughs> since i was about 16 yeah but He's like, yeah, they're like related. Yeah, they're very close related with yeah, with the alpha and beta acids that are in them. So, right. um, yeah, whereas hops are um, they're a cone similar to marijuana as well. They're like you get cones and like instantly go, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you see enough TV. <laughs> 
close enough. Yeah. yeah. You get, yeah but yeah, so that, there, there is a reason why it does yeah. smell yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah but so that, I mean, that obviously loses its flavour when you brew it because it, I've yeah. never had a beer that tasted like it. No, I don't that think would be yeah, rank. a hemp beer. <laughs> That'd be, be rad. It'd be very interesting. It'd be horrible, wouldn't it? I don't. Yeah, I'll, I'll stick to hops. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what's a what, what's a, a recipe that you've tried mm. that you thought, oh, this will be, <laughs> this is going to change the world, okay. and then it was just complete garbage. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, what did you put in there? Like oysters to me seems like something you'd go like, oh, that's a ballsy move. Yeah. What's um, the, what else have you? Oh, uh, not. I haven't really done anything as ballsy, I suppose. It's yeah. probably we've been playing around with different sour beers. And right. I've, um, you can put an actual penguin in there, or like if you've... yeah, penguin feet. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they'll love that. One's the diet of natural causes, mm, but a bit of mutton bird over <laughs> in Port Ferry. Yes. No, I think I think we like the um, the t- more traditional styles. Okay. Right. Um, You're not going out on a no, I'm not going to go out <laughs> on, and use actual limbs. No, um, but I think. I think adding fruits and all that kind of stuff is a lot of fun. Yeah. And yeah, you can get a little bit creative. Like people have put seaweed in beers and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. So right. Well, that's a good option for the uh, the mess down at the pavilion. You yeah. Could, yeah. Absolutely. Because um, yeah, you only, get that for free. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm sure that'll sell really well too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you'd have to sell that to the tourists. So yeah. it's like. Yeah, I can just imagine um, the guys down on the foreshore there that actually deal with that smell all the time. They'll <laughs> open a beer and it's like. <laughs> No, it takes me back to a bad time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, yeah, probably yeah. not. But, um, like, f- fruits and flowers and all that kind of stuff, those. Yeah. So, you can get really, really f- funky with those type of things. Have you ever just walked outside and looked at your plants and gone, I wonder what happens if I chuck that in there? Yeah, I think, um, like, your herbs and stuff like that. Absolutely. Yeah, um, you do. But, yeah. but you can also get that from hops as well and the yeast you use. So, you can get um, flavours that are closely related to, say, your thyme and all that kind of stuff and um, spice by actually adding... Um, adding different types of hops to it at different right. um, stages. But I suppose the most cr- creative beer I've ever done would be, um, I called it the Christmas beer, and it was like eating, a, uh, drinking a, um, a Christmas pudding. Ah. So it was cinnamon, um, there was allspice, um, apple juice, um, which was actually not juice, it was cider. Yes. Um, and, and fireball whiskey. So um, <laughs> it, was, it was a bomb. It was about 8%. <laughs> And um, a neighbour up the road, he had, he loved it. He had about three and you couldn't understand what he was saying yeah. afterwards. But he goes, this is an absolute cracking beer. And I'm just going, yep. It was a cool night as well and it warmed the cockles of the heart, that's for sure. Right. Yeah, but... Um, a little seasonal number you could bring out at Christmas time. Absolutely. And that was just purely because you wanted to get funky around Christmas time. Yeah. And we, and Do you remember the recipe? You got it written down? Yeah, it's... it's ah, uh, it's in the head. It's, um, yeah. yeah, and uh, there's so much um, technology out there for us home brewers as well, like yeah. this... Um, I've got a recipe creator on my phone. So oh. um, if I get an, an idea or I hear people making different things, it's like, okay, I'll write a concept down and then I'll go back and yeah. you know, work on it and try and create something. <laughs> and I've got that Christmas beer recipe. Christmas beer, good to go. Um, yeah, so it could be a fun little July beer or something like that. Oh, um, it, it, yeah, it's a warm, it's warm, a, warm yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, warms the heart. You need yeah. a cold weather sort of beer. Absolutely. <laughs> but no, nah, good fun and... I think, um, yeah, we, we kind of want to go around those traditional styles, but also jazz them up a little bit and put our own spin. And because, you know, we're home brewers, you know, we've brewed like 70 different beers, styles between the three of us. So yeah. we um, kind of understand, you know, what who drinks what and yes. what works well and what doesn't. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. You've got to have your staple. I mean, you've got to have your ones that are... Yeah, it's yeah. selling and whatever. You can't just always make yeah Christmas beers. No, and <laughs> like, no. Man, I'm gonna make an Easter chocolate beer. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Like make an eggnog or yeah, yeah. Um, cho- but like chocolate stouts are a big win, and yeah. you know hazy pale ales and also funky sours where they've they've gotten plants and flowers from you know around them, even s- s- fresh salt as well from the ocean. Go yeah. walk in with a bucket and put it into beer like. They do that. Yeah. That's amazing. So like really local. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll definitely do something like that once we get um, our own tap room. Because, yeah, yeah, I think I'm trying to sell a thousand litres of that <laughs> can might be a bit of a bit push. Turning up to your brewery with a tip truck of seaweed. Yeah. Dumping it on their front lawn and going, brew this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That'll, um, 
I've, I can imagine the you wife. might not make any friends. No, I think the neighbours would would hate us. So we'll have to probably <laughs> find a block of land that's well away. But no, I think um, the nostalgia of brewing is like people love it. They love seeing people cook food and stuff like that as well. So actually seeing people make the beer and hearing the story about it. Yeah. Because each beer is different and each comes from a different place. So yeah, I think that'll be what we want to do. Yeah, and, cool. And being in education, I love passing on knowledge as well. Sure. So I'd love to be able to do that and, you know, potentially, you know, work with the TAFE as well and bring more, um, you know, educate more brewers as well. Ah, wonderful brewing school. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Middle well, Island Brewing School. Instead of having to go to, um, you know, Ballarat, Adelaide or Melbourne, it's like, yeah. yeah, or Bendigo. It's like, okay, Warnable's big enough to, you know, probably draw a few people down, so yeah. why not? Does it surprise you? It probably surprised me that there isn't really a, a local Warnable-based brewing company at all. Yeah. Like, I know that the Flying Horse yeah. did one for a little while, and, and then Noodle Doof here in, in Coroit. Um, yeah. They got, yeah. And Sour and Piglet Boys down at Port Campbell. Yeah, 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 Port Cowie, yeah. So yeah. now we're getting yeah, a bit further, further away. away again. But, but Warrnambool based, um, I mean, a noodle just only two year old or something, anyway, yeah, isn't it? Um, so and those boys have been brewing for you know a decade or yes, more. And yeah, elsewhere. Yeah, yeah and they're they're absolutely fantastic. And yeah. the best thing but about it, it is yeah. they you could go up to them and talk to them about it, and they're just so enthusiastic Are about they? Yeah. about yeah. the process, but also enthusiastic that we're trying to do it as well. Mm. Yeah, um, so does it surprise you that yeah people haven't? Really take it off in Warrnambool? As well? um, uh, we are. I mean, you guys are now, but yeah, uh, yeah. two years ago, if I asked you this question, oh. you'd be like, yeah, why hasn't anyone made like a Warrnambool local brewery with Absolutely. a local logo and a local... Mm. Yeah. Like the Flying Horse Boys, they definitely tried and, and like they would have been a little bit before their time too. Yeah. Um, if it had worked, like, they would have been... Yeah, it takes a lot of effort. It's like you can't run a restaurant and a bar and also a brewery. Yeah, 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 at yeah the same and time. can it and blah blah blah. There's a, yeah, a lot of moving parts. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, for them it's probably it was probably just a little bit out of reach. Yeah. But we would have loved it, I reckon, as locals back then. Um, hmm. Been especially being at uni, having to go up to the brewery, that would have been atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> it was atrocious. <laughs> Took all our money. Yes. Yeah. But <laughs> right. no, it was great. But yeah, you've, you've, uh, you've found, the, found the hole in the market that Wannamal needed and, yeah. and ran with it. It's good. Yeah, uh, it definitely did. And I think we, have, we started a home brew club up in 2020 as well. And we got over uh, 100 members in like a, two or three weeks. We're like, <laughs> there is a community out here that are screaming out for something. Yeah. And so we're like, yep, let's... Um, Let's go one step, and let's you know, let's what what's Warnable lacking? So yeah, you know, let's do a brewery. You know, potentially could even have a little homebrew side to it. But our core thing is yeah, just being able to make fun beers and letting people drink them. So yeah, cool. Yeah. Have I missed anything major? Have you missed any major points you need to get out? Um, I reckon we're just about, we're just about, about done. Yeah, I'll, nearly an hour. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. Me talking for an hour. <laughs> Um, yeah, Punctuated with my stupid laugh, don't worry. I love it. Oh, it's great. It gets us through the day. Um, <laughs> no, I think um, it's just, yeah, it's it's growing big and more. Yeah. I think we're, we're just a bit dumbstruck, actually, that how much people have um, said how good it is, yeah. as well as um, the community support that have from businesses that have taken us on and are saying, yeah, well, we need more. Yeah. Um, can you keep stocking us? And right. Make- are you able to make it as quick as people want it? Um, we've got to, we, we um, try and brew enough to kind of last us for a certain length of time. Yes. And then course. at that stage, so people can come in and, and pick up whatever they need. And then we go, all right, we're going to need to do X, Y, Z more and let's press play. So yeah. and that's what we're about to do, especially for the, um, the summer months, because yeah, we're tipping that we'll run out of what we've got now. So we have to press play. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I'm not uh, that organised. I, I don't reckon I could do that. I'd, I'd be ringing them up in like November, going, "Oh, how quick can you get this stuff out, dude?" Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Um, and that's been having it, like setting up those um, those relationships with those breweries. Yes, like, can we actually fit in? And then they're like, "Yeah, no, you're good for it." Or so they're ringing go. you, going, "If you want something for summer, you need to have this booked in in two yeah, weeks. Pretty much. Otherwise, we're going to shut the books." Yeah, yeah, and um, and that's yeah, what we um, we try and do. You know, on the weekends, we set up a heap of ma- emails. So come, you know, Monday morning when we go to our day jobs, we press send and we kind of just sit back and, and after hours, we're yeah. talking to heaps of people and yeah, um, stop. 
doesn't yeah. stop. But yeah, I think that's yeah the beauty of it that um, everyone's kind of just real cruisy in the in the industry. But when things need to move, they make it happen. Yeah. And um, yeah, so we're just jumping on on board with the craze at the moment. So cool. So you say you, you say the people in the homebrew, um, you've got a, a, a group. Or yeah, a, or um, something. yeah, Warrnambool Homebrew Association. Yeah. Right. So they look you up, and you you could give them a, a heap. If people are looking at it, going, oh, I wouldn't mind getting into homebrew, and then yeah, you could give them a whole heap of advice and yeah, tell them uh, how to get started. And, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's um, so many homebrewers in in Warrnambool that are way better than me yes <laughs> yeah but just haven't but, haven't ran with the business but of it. They, yeah, um, they, don't, they don't want to yeah, no that's, that's right that's the um and yeah like they but they're so open and honest with you know what what um oh, i've made a mistake here what can i do to rectify it and, oh yeah and they're like oh yeah do x y and z and it's like oh that totally makes sense yeah. and you um yeah or ask um is anyone available to come help with a brew or just even chat because yeah. everyone get when we get together it's we're just talking and having I'm a sure couple of I'm sure there's a years. few, uh, a calendar of tasting events as well in yeah, people's oh, garages. Like, Yeah, we've had a couple. Um, <laughs> we probably need to be a bit more proactive, but um, everyone's just really busy at the moment. Mm. So, um, yeah, we're, we're looking to do, a, yeah, we'll do another Christmas beer run. So we'll do a big bottle swap. And that's a lot of fun because, yeah, you get a lot of different styles. Because, <laughs> yeah, we, we don't put a, a, um, a category on it. We just go, go for it. Do what Try you like. See what it is. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Because that's the um, that's the beauty of it all. So being able to do what you like doing and um, passing on, you know, that passion to other people. So yeah, yeah. Right. Um, so if if uh, if I wanted to go and get a, a can of it or a glass of it somewhere here in in Wanamal, where would I go? Um, name me a few places, then we'll wrap it name up. Name a few places. Uh, so we uh, just recently got into uh, Frolic Lane. So yes. yeah, go give them a buzz um, at Logan's. Uh, down along the foreshore at the kiosk at Simon's uh, Lawn Bar when it's up and running. Yep. Um, we're at North Point um, Bottle Shop we're at IGA, um, Swinton's IGA. Go give Benny a big pat on the back. I used to have 10 at the Cali, except I drank them the other night. Yeah, the Cali. Go, go, go <laughs> I'm say sure they've all. restocked since. Yeah, go, go see <laughs> Lucas and um, yeah, um, demand a uh, Middle Island. Um, yes. Yeah, uh, we've got and people all through into camping out. Um, in Port Ferry, go to the golf course, go to the Oak and Anchor, go IGA over there. Yeah. Um, you know, we're just absolutely... Everywhere. Oh. It's actually, if, if people do actually... Yeah, look us up on... It's on the website. Yeah. I, I went, yeah, and you can type in where you live and it yeah, pops and up. Where yeah, it shows pop. you yeah, Ararat and Caston up there, Portland, a little bit in Croyd as well. Like, like you, when we talk about it, you just got to sit back and go and pinch yourself. Go, <laughs> there is a, there are beers everywhere, which yeah. is just incredible. And it's, um, it's all up our own back. Like, yeah, mm. so... Um, no, hats off to the team and everything because yeah I'm, I might be talking about it but there's, there's a lot of people behind yes. me so yeah um, you're just a pretty face oh <laughs> you're generous <laughs> you're generous I think uh, it's just yeah someone who will talk an hour for you <laughs> yes that's right <laughs> no uh, uh, it's good fun and we love it so yeah and it's a, one big one big team so yeah just one moving part to moving the others so yeah it's great Awesome. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you uh, agreed to come on and, uh, well, I can cheers you with the, mm. the, the last drop of what I've got left here. Cheers, mate. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And, uh, yeah, everybody, head out and uh, grab something from Middle Island Brewery, Sam Munro. Thank you very much. Thanks, Andy. Cheers. <laughs>